Now the truth is, is if I could tell you today, hey, guess what? You can have your life begin to look more and more like the fruit of the Spirit. We might kind of sign up for that one and go, hey, I like that. Is anybody there with me? Yep, I would take that one. I would like to. Could you raise your hand again? It's the teacher coming out of me. (laughs) But there's a second thing that John says that the Christ is going to baptize us with. It's point B. Believers are baptized in fire. And initially when I was looking at this passage, I thought that the Holy Spirit and the fire were for two different groups of people. I thought, well, the believers get the Holy Spirit and the non-believers, they get the fire. (laughs) You laugh, but I really did. I'm like, well, you know, that's sure. It's interesting that the construction, and as I was reading, the, the way that the sentence is laid out, Holy Spirit and fire are connected. There's no way that you can separate those two in this spot. And so what you have is that believers are baptized in fire. And I thought about that. Obviously, fire can bring power. If you look at any of those wildfires that we've heard about, like the one in Colorado that burned all those homes down, fire does bring a power to it. But fire has a use as well to refine us. And I believe that one of the things that John is saying about the Christ is that when he comes, he will bring his Holy Spirit to give us the power, but also to refine us. There's a lot of biblical precedent for this. Look in Isaiah 48. Isaiah writes this. It's God speaking. He says, see, I've refined you, though not as silver. I've tested you in the furnace of what? Yeah, do you guys know what affliction is? Hardship, troubles, pain, persecution, we, we, and, and you know what, I, I wish, has anybody ever actually seen gold or silver be heated so hot that the dross, the junk, the impurities come to the top? Has anyone actually ever seen it? I've never seen it myself, but I have heard that the dross will come to the top, they skim off the dross, and it leaves the gold or the silver or the precious metal that much more pure. And God says, that's what I desire. That if you believe in Jesus Christ, you can expect that there will be difficulty. Man, Hebrews 5.8, Dave referenced this verse just a couple of weeks ago. Jesus himself learned obedience from the things that he suffered. If Jesus has to learn obedience that way, then how do we get a pass on it? And you know what? You guys, I've been thinking a lot about this. There are... Um, I think it's some dangerous trends sometimes in our version of, as we think about Christianity. There's a sense in which people think, if my life is going well, then I must be pleasing to God. And that is not true. If our lives are difficult and painful and hurting, it may be that God is saying all the more, I am so thrilled that you get to go through this because on the other side it will make you more like my son. And I am, I am the, the biggest uh, wimp here. Like, I hate pain. I would put my lack of pain tolerance up against any of yours. My wife knows that. I mean, it's, I hate pain. And yet, that's the very thing that the Lord often uses to change us. Think about for just a moment, what kind of pain are you in right now? And I'm sure that there are literally hundreds of people right now in this room who are in pain. Relational, vocational, financial. I mean, name it. And our natural tendency is to complain and grouse and wish I was anywhere but here living this life. And instead, this may be the biggest gift that the Holy Spirit wants to give to you to refine you like Jesus.